welcome to What's the Deal with Sam? Starring Sam Lilly. Join Sam as he discusses a wide variety of topics. Now let's start the show. Thank you. All right, listen up. I just want to bring up this this thing. There's a lot of things you could talk about and how there's bullshit happening in the game industry, in the video game industry, in the video game industry. Good start, strong start. But the thing is, like, I want to talk about just like a smaller, more focused thing because I'm not really an authority here. I just kind of observe things and hear things, and see things. That's all observing, I guess. And, and like, I wanted to bring up this one thing, because it's it's a nice misconception they have going on here. A lot of game companies like to keep you thinking that they're telling you the truth on this one, and they're not. And you might think that they are because of how they present it. But again, they're not. They're just, they're tricking you. They're tricking you. And see, here's the thing with this. I'm talking about the price of video games. You see, you've been told probably a number of times now how, oh, well, video game prices haven't gone up at all. They, the video games have stayed the same price for new games. Usually it's generally 60 bucks here, you know, maybe 50 to 60 in that range. Let's say 60 bucks. And most of them are that. Um, and then uh, it's been that way for kind of a long time. I think it's been... It, 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 at least a decade, probably more, of that. And, you know, that's kind of, you know, sounds good, right? It sounds like, oh, cool, 60 bucks. Still 60 bucks to get games. And you would think naturally with the progression of, you know, the way games work that, you know, now games are getting bigger, there's more content in them generally, just just by the fact that technology keeps advancing, you're getting more stuff in your games. They're looking nicer in there. And there's, because of the space, you know, the size limits keep expanding and, and the technology gets, gets better. We're getting better and better things. And essentially, it's almost like getting better value now than we used to. Um, but, you know, that's something you just expect to happen. And so the prices aren't necessarily supposed to just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger to match that. That's a natural progression and the prices um, should just keep reflecting the kind of thing you're getting, the content you're getting, right? So the thing that is really tricking people here, the thing that's tripping people up is how basically this thing of like, you're not getting the same amount of content, at least if you look at it as more of like a scaling ratio of, of what you're getting as it advances. Um, you're not getting the same amount of content as you used to for that 60 bucks. Because you used to pay 60 bucks and you would get a game and you would get a full game. And that was the idea. Hey, here's... Here's the money for this game, and I got the entire game that I bought and took with me for that money. But because of the internet and DLC, and e even just those, I mean, there's other factors on top of that. But even just looking at the idea of like the internet connectivity and, and games having DLC, that's been a big portion of, of what we're talking about here, where now... This is all content of the game as, as the full complete game, but you're not getting it for the 60 bucks. You have to buy another packs for 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever the fuck it is. And season passes if you want to get all of them or something, you know, or you get a later edition of the game that has all that extra shit on it, you know, and you have to wait for the game to basically be discounted enough so that you could pay the 60 bucks to get all the content like you should have maybe in the first place, if it gets an addition like that, if it does, and if it includes all that stuff. And and it's like, well, they try to say that that's just extra, right? It's just extra stuff you're getting on top of it, and bullshit to that. I'm sure there are instances where it is extra, but this shit is being planned from the beginning to be put on your fucking game. Like, it's not like, oh, we just, like, you know, we made the game and then made some extra stuff for it later and then put it on there. They used to do that, but that was usually in the form of an expansion pack, or they had so much content that they just kept working on it and worked it into a sequel. And that was also, again, before you could just go online and download the extra stuff really easily to get that stuff like you can now. And so it's easier to just do it this way. And, and, again, like, you're getting, basically, the idea is you're getting a base game. You're getting not the same amount of content you should be getting if you're scaling it for the amount of time and the technology and all that. You're not getting the same amount of content, the same um, bang for your buck that you used to get 
um, before when this started. So now basically you're getting a base game. You're getting the base game. Not the full game, but the base game. And you're getting these other parts of the game that make it the full game. Those are being sold to you for more money. So essentially you've got to pay upwards of $60. Um, to get the full game experience now. So in that sense, yes, absolutely, video game prices have gone up. And the way that they're getting around this, again, aside from just saying that's base game, this other content is extra, um, you know, they're getting around this with a really nice bit of trickery because people have caught on to this and they're saying, you're just chopping out this content and selling it back to us later. You know, you're making, and, and like, from the perspective of here's the full game and now let's take the stuff off and now you have to pay us to put this stuff back into the game. Well, that's not necessarily true, technically. Because most of these games, well I think there's some examples where they did have on-disc DLC and you did just have to pay to unlock the content on the disc, which is absolutely doing that. But, um, what most of these companies will do to get away with this shit is to just, you know, put out the game and not have that content be part of that file or disc or, or whatever, um, game card, whatever the fuck it is that you happen to have your game on. And the other pieces do just come out later when they're finished. A lot of times they're not even necessarily done yet. The game itself in its entirety isn't quite done yet, at least for all the things they're, you know, they promised and advertised and everything. If they don't have it yet, they can fix it in post. They can put it in DLC. They can sell you stuff they tried to promise you as part of the game when that stuff's supposed to be extra stuff, apparently, but if they promise that stuff, shouldn't it be part of the main game? And so what you're getting is a base game and not all the stuff you're supposed to get that they promised you, so you can't say that that's still is the same as the full game and this is extra game. See, see, what I'm, see what I'm going with that? It's a lot of things. I'm going kind of fast. I'm kind of upset. Sorry, but thing is they plan this shit out ahead of time. That's the that's really the point of that. That's how they get you. Technically, they plan for there to be other parts of this game be DLC so that they don't actually have it finished and on there and part of the game when it comes out. It is stuff that's coming out later. And then by that, in that sense, not being chopped off or cut out of the original game. It just means that it was planned to not be part of it in the first place and they're trying to give you less game for, again, the same 60 bucks. Um, that way they can make more money on the same amount of content they would normally have to make, or hell, sometimes they'll make more money on having even less content. Um, because if they're not really getting sales on the game or some of the DLC, they can cancel some of that shit and not do more of it because, you know, even though they promised it or even if they said it was going to be there, who gives a shit? People aren't buying it, and so there's not enough people to get mad at them to actually, you know, hurt them with their negative reviews of that, and, and so there's no point in trying to appease these people. And that's kind of how this weird, vicious cycle happens, and, and now we have this nice, cozy little place of people who are just, you know, buying DLC, um, eating it up because it's just normal, because people have stopped bitching so much about it. You know, they don't like bad DLC, or even that's kind of gone out the window, where now it's, it's to the point where, well, as long as it's not microtransactions, loot boxes, cosmetics, as long as it's not... As long as it's not premium currency, as long as it's not something so shitty that um, you know it's it's worse than DLC, you know, as long as long as it's not something that's a step beyond that, then it's fine, you know. Like they're they're they've just been beaten into submission with DLC, um, and so we're just kind of starting to accept it as the norm that you don't get full games anymore. You always get a base game and then DLC and then whatever else. They're trying to put on here and normalize, and eventually that shit will get normalized too. If it keeps up and they can keep putting it in games, it'll just become the standard, and eventually there'll be some other new bullshit we'll have to say, that shit's terrible. Like, I'll, I'll have microtransactions and loot boxes and DLC and episodic releases and subscription fees and, and, and you know, you know, streaming my game instead of actually, like, being able to buy it and have it. I'll, I'll do all that shit, you know, but... But this new trend, this is too far. I'm not doing this shit. That's that's weird. That's too much, you know. And it's like that's you know they'll they'll push and then they'll pull back and then they'll try to make everything normalize as much as they can. And that's just where we are. Where essentially, 
they would love to just release the idea of a game and then sell you on the on the idea that this game could exist and then not actually make anything because then they won't have to spend any resources and just get money from you. You could just continually get pre-orders for games that never even exist. You know, that would be very ideal, I suppose. It's 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 just annoying and frustrating and I just thought I would shine the spotlight on something that most of you who are into gaming and follow this kind of thing probably already know, but some of you might not. Some of you might not be that like thinking about it that much and just been like, oh yeah, I guess you know I'm playing it. You get DLC, you get these you know microtransactions and loot boxes and whatever the fuck. That's just games, right? It's not, and you're being sold on this lie, and they're just gonna keep piling these on as much as we let them get away with, I guess. And that's why for most games, I'm not asking, you know, I'm not buying DLC. And it's not like, you know, um, there's some, sometimes when I understand it, if you are like a smaller, you know, more independent company trying to, you know, put out these games, sometimes they need to sell that DLC or do Kickstarter stuff or something. They need to be able to make the money to make the stuff and to keep going. That I can understand. And that's a little different, you know, me buying, you know, the DLC for Shantae Half Genie Hero is a little different than me going and buying a fucking, you know... $20 uh, set of, of DLC for Breath of the Wild, a game they've been working on for how many fucking years, you know, and, and, and delayed so much and then finally put it out and still not even totally done. They still had the fucking balls to put out goddamn DLC for a fucking Zelda game that includes some of the fucking story. I don't think Nintendo, I don't think Nintendo needs my extra fucking $20 to finish their fucking game. To get the entirety of their fucking game they took a million years to finish. That they said was going to be on the Wii U, uh, you know, at the end of 2016. And then became a, a dual fucking launch on, on Wii U and on the fucking Switch. No, I don't think they need that extra 20 bucks after they yanked my chain on that one. I don't, I don't, I don't know why a big company like Nintendo yanking my chain doesn't deserve 20 bucks, but I just, I'm not gonna give it to them because I'm an asshole. Because I'm the asshole. That's, that's where we are. And other companies do it, and they do it worse. But that's the one that pissed me off because I didn't think Nintendo was gonna bend me over and fuck me. But they did. And I still haven't gotten that DLC because, you know what, I just, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm already bent. I'm already bent over that I got a Wii U and I got the game on the Wii U and however, other many things I just, you know, just let them get away with because I like their fucking games. But this, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not, there's no insertion. No insertion. I'm not allowing that. And that's why I'm not going to get the fucking Breath of the Wild DLC. And, 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 holy shit, what's the deal with these, these, these lies? What's the deal with these lies? Because that's what they are, and they suck. What's the deal with sin? What's the deal with sin? What's the deal with sin? What's the deal with sin?